two young boys, Roger was 10 and Chad was seven, were playing video games in their family room when the power suddenly went out. They were upset that they lost all progress in their video game, but that was to pale in comparison to the terrifying events that were to follow. Disturbing events were about to unfold on two young boys living in Seneca Falls, a small town in upstate New York, in 2006. Soon after the power went out, their mother came rushing into the room with candles and blankets and sweatshirts um, because it was in the middle of winter and she wanted to make sure that they weren't freezing because who knows how long the power would be out. The father was on the phone to the power company right away and the odd thing was the power company did not register a problem. Uh, it looked like there was power on in their neighborhood. So um, they argued for a little while and then they finally agreed to send out an electrician to check it out. After the call, father came in the family room and asked everyone to stay put uh, as he was going to go and check things out, uh, go outside maybe and see if the neighbors had power and see if there were any other problems. Soon after he left, Chad needed to go to the bathroom. So he grabbed a candle and went down the hall to the bathroom. Soon after, he let out this terrifying scream which startled both Chad and his mother, or Roger and his mother. And the mother ran down the hall to grab Chad and uh, she brought him back and he was just shaking with terror. And she asked him what was wrong. And he said, as he'd opened the bathroom door, he saw a naked man jump by with gray skin. The mother was thinking, this is kind of an odd thing for him to imagine. But she said, the candlelight's probably just playing tricks on your eyes. But Chad was adamant that what he saw was not a shadow, but a man scurrying down the hall. Suddenly, they heard their father calling out, hello? Hello? Thinking he had heard something, maybe it was the electrician. After a few moments, they heard the front door open and a cold draft blew throughout the house. How odd uh, that the husband would forget, that father would forget to shut the door behind him. Mother got up and said to the boy, stay behind, stay here. Uh, I'm gonna go check out what's going on. Maybe the electrical worker is here. So she got up and with a worried look on her face, started heading for the front door and started calling out her husband's name. Rich, Rich. And as she left, she closed the door behind her and the boys were left alone. So the boys were sitting alone in the flickering candlelight. And as the minutes went by, Chad glanced around nervously, hoping the strange encounter he had previously would not be repeating itself. Then abruptly, Chad started screaming. He covered his head with a blanket. Roger started looking around frantically to see what was going on, uh, what he was screaming at. And then what he saw next chilled him to the core with terror. He saw a long gray arm slowly withdraw under an antique piano they had at the far end of the family. Roger was astounded. Never in the seven years that he had lived in that house had he encountered anything paranormal. Even though the far end of the family room was shrouded in darkness, he could vaguely make out a humanoid form. It was slowly approaching. As he watched, the creature slowly moved forward. He was frozen in fear. And he had an overwhelming sense of darkness that was sort of emanating from this creature. He wanted to run, but he couldn't move. He was frozen in terror, but he also didn't want to leave his brother behind. Chad peeked out from under his blanket and then something strange started to happen. He started to giggle uncontrollably. Roger too started to feel the urge to laugh as the creature got closer. And he too started to laugh uncontrollably. As the creature came forward, it touched Roger on the shoulder. It was only feet away. Roger just sat there calmly uh, wondering how its neck could be so thin. Still giggling, Roger watched the creature then turn to his seven-year-old brother. As it approached his brother, it stared intently into his eyes and examined his facial features. Every so often, unspeakable terror would seep back into Roger, only for the joyful feelings to reassert themselves. Eventually, and with much relief, the creature got up and slowly lumbered its way down the hall. <clears throat> Soon the feelings of terror had returned to the boys. And they jumped up and ran out screaming at the top of their lungs for their parents. The boys ran outside with their socks on, not bothering to put on their shoes. They noticed that nobody was out front, but strangely, the neighbors all had power. So as they ran, uh, they then ran around the back of the house and noticed their mom standing on the back porch, just staring out into the woods behind their backyard, as if waiting for somebody, completely unresponsive to their cries. So as the mom just stood there, completely unresponsive, the boys kind of trying to get her attention, the doorbell rang. And the boys then ran out to the front, maybe to get some help. There at the front door, they saw the electrician. 
The electrician kind of looked down at their feet thinking how odd for young boys to be out in the middle of the night in the middle of a winter night without shoes on. He asked if their parents were around. And the boys found it difficult to form complete sentences as though they were affected by some kind of trance or still recovering. Um, they simply pointed to the back. And as the electrician made his way to the back, the boys were falling closely behind. They almost bumped into their parents coming back up to the front, walking casually as though nothing had happened. The mother immediately noticed the boys were without their shoes and scolded them. As they made their way to the front, they noticed that the power had come back on. Father Rich, the father, had thanked the electrician for getting the power on so quickly, but the electrician said he hadn't touched anything. So they concluded that it was a momentary glitch. Father paid the electrician for the service call and sent him on his way. Neither parent remembered being outside for an extended period of time. Long after the incident, the boys had begged their parents to move away from the house, but they refused. They chalked up their story as wild imagination. The parents had no recollection of being outside for more than a few seconds or a minute at most. The young brothers knew better. They corroborated each other's stories from that night, and yet many questions still remained. The creature seemed to possess strange powers that allowed it to alter the passage of time and wipe or alter people's memories. For a long while after, the brothers understandably had a hard time falling asleep, so they would sneak into each other's rooms for security. Uh, thankfully, the creature never returned. There's been a lot of speculation over what the creature was. Was it some kind of emotional vampire feeding off of the fear of the boys? Some have speculated that it bears a resemblance to a cryptid known as the Rake, uh, or was it some kind of alien? Recently, there was footage captured by a family in Quebec that where they had seen this strange creature approach a moose or started stalking a moose. And Quebec is close to upstate New York. There have also been uh, numerous sightings in and around the United States. Thanks for watching. For more stories like this, like and subscribe. The main source for the story came from Tom Lyon's book, Stay Out of the Woods. There's a link in the description. Also, if you like this shirt, there's also a link in the description for that. See you next time. Genius.